Ты Só eu sou o que Tu descobriu tudo aqui? Tu descobriu todas essas coisas aí? Ah, não senti que tem. Ah. Ah. All right, so for last talk of the day, we have the special one plan talk by Daniel, who will tell us a bit about chaos on ultrograph shift spaces. All right, thank, thank you. you, Luis. So I'm not gonna start uh, thanking the organizers because that would seem a bit uh, self-serving, but uh, uh, I would like to thank you for being here and not uh, leaving. So this is gonna be a, uh, I, I intended to be an introductory talk, and I apologize already because I didn't I didn't plan on talking until just a few days ago. So, and so I didn't have so so much time to to prepare it. So I apologize in advance, but please feel free to ask any questions anytime. So chaos is a, a really a dynamical uh, concept. So something that's a bit maybe alien here. So to try to understand it a bit. It's also an area that's uh, very much studied in mathematics uh, in relation to uh, dynamical systems. And these ultra graphs are like, well, you know them already. You just don't know that you know them because they, <laughs> they're examples of labeled label graphs that Gilles is explaining to you. So I'll really be doing more of an introduction on chaos and shift spaces. Uh, so the first my talk is like, see how much I prepare the talk. <laughs> Uh, it's a blank uh, page. So uh, we've seen a, a little bit about coding dynamical systems. So let's say we have a dynamical system. So that can be a space, uh, usually a complex space with a homeomorphism. So we have a map T that goes from a space X. Oh, X is a bad choice, but X to X. Oh, I want to change that X because I'm going to use X for a lot of, of other things. So uh, I say we have a map T from R to R. And you can ask this map just to be continuous, for example. And let's say R R is a rectangle. Right? It's a rectangle. Or a square. I mean, which is also a thing. Uh, and we want in dynamical systems, once you have a map, we want to understand the behavior of the orbits. So you have a point, uh, a point X, and you, oh, that's already too small. Uh, so you have a point X and you want to understand the orbit. So you want to, you know, iteratively apply T to this point. So then you want to understand where T of X go, T square of X, and so on, All right? So you want to understand the behavior, behavior of this sequence that's obtained from point X by applying T over and over. So one way of doing it is doing what? You can, well, here's your rectangle. So uh, you can, let's say, partition this rectangle in a finite number of sub smaller subsets. Uh, let's say here I can do one very simple. And I'll just call the top one zero and the, the top one zero and the bottom one one. Okay. And so this map T could be just, you know, any map from the rectangle to itself. Maybe uh, I rotate by a rational here on the x direction and by another irrational on the y direction, any map you like. So let's take our point x, say it's here. So here I have my point x. So I'll see, well, x is in the top rectangle. So this is associated with a zero. Then I apply t of x. Well, maybe t of x falls here. 
So then it's again in the zero rectangle. Then I do t square of x, maybe falls here, one. So I put a one. I don't know, I can do t cubed. Uh, let's say t cubed of x is back here. So I have a map zero. I don't know, it can go on like forever, right? So t4 of x, and here I have a one. Okay, so uh, from this orbit, I created a sequence of zeros and ones, right? Um, but now, look, if I was studying this map, where they take x, right? If I, I look at the orbit of x goes to t of x, so this will go here. When I apply t, this will go to uh, t of x, right? And when I look at the orbit of this point, this will be t square of x, t cube of x, and so on. So what would be the sequence that I'll have here? That will map from there to here. Well, t of x is in the zero, right? Not one, one. So zero, uh, one, zero, one, and so on. So what did you do here at the bottom to get from this sequence that was telling you the path of the, of the orbit? Well, we just defined the shift map, right? We erased the first entry, right? We just erased the first entry. So and that was, uh, Gilles was telling you with the group void and so on, there was the shift map, which uh, is, you know, symbolic dynamics is always about studying this map. Okay, so, so that's why uh, when we, we want a shift space, what is that? Uh, a shift space, let's say we get, uh, a space of sequences, so a product of some elements, one, zero, one, up to n elements here. And so this is all infinite sequences with this uh, fine number of symbols. Uh, we put the product topology on it, and the map here that we have in our system is just the shift map, right? We got an infinite sequence, we erase the first entry. And a shift, if you look in symbolic dynamics, is any closed shift invariant subset. Here we had the product, of, this is uh, the discrete topology here, and you've got the product topology on the, on, the, on the product space. Uh, the, yeah, oh yeah, sorry, natural numbers. Yes, I'm doing just one-sided, yes. It could, usually two-sided, but I'm doing one-sided. And um, so you don't need to worry too much about it. Uh, so you, in symbolic dynamics, it shows that the subsets of X, they're invariant and closed. So if they're invariant and closed, invariant plus closed, they can be seen as a, um, a subset uh, that's specified by a set of forbidden words. So let's say in your sequences of zero and ones, you decide there are some words that you don't like. Like if you're teaching, you know, your kid like to speak, and there's some words that you don't want them to concatenate together. So you you space them. If it's invariant and closed, it's uh, it's a, a collection of sequences where those forbidden words do not appear. And so that's the standard. And when this set of forbidden words is finite, that's a shift of finite type. And it's also known in symbolic dynamics that any shift of finite type is conjugate to a uh, shift coming from a graph, okay? So, well, I don't think I need to decide what a define what a graph is, right? Everybody knows uh, here. So, if you have a graph, uh, right, the edge shift space consists of all the infinite sequences on that uh, graph. And again, right, so you have the discrete topology on the elements and just to the product topology later. So there is a standard metric for the product topology, which is what? Well, it's given here, but if I get a sequence, let's say uh, zero, zero, one, just uh, let's do in the product of zero, one, so on. And let's say I have one, one, uh, zero, zero, and so on. So what you do, you start to compare the coordinates. So zero is different for one, zero is different for one. And you see the first one, uh, oh, maybe I did it wrong, sorry. Uh, you see the first one where they disagree, right? I was doing it wrong right there. Let's do like this, zero, 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 one. Okay, so the first coordinate agree, great. 
second quadrant agree. So the first one where they do not agree is the third one. So if this is x and this is y, the distance between x and y will be, well, the, here, right, third coordinate, 1 over 2 to the 3. Okay, so that metric gives you the, the product topology, and it's the standard metric on the shift space. Now, you know, when you study chaos in dynamical systems, there are many uh, notions of chaos. The most common one is Lear chaos. So that's the first one. Well, this is the first and only one we're going to see today. Um, so what does it mean, right, for a dynamical system to be chaotic? I mean, it's a word that we use, right? Chaotic, I mean, have different behavior. So first thing, you have to know what's a pair to be scrambled. Right, so uh, I have a dynamical system. So here is a space and a function. And I want to define when a pair of points is scrambled. So if you remember your uh, analysis course, what's a limb soup of a sequence, right? You look at all the set of all uh, limits of subsequences, and then you take the, the supremum of those. So for example, if I had a sequence 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, so on, for this sequence, well, if I have a 1 here, and say 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, the limb soup would be 1, and the limb inf would be 0. Yeah, equivalent, right? Isn't it? I think you can use the sum too. So, yes. Um, that's a good question. Uh, they have to be uniformly equivalent. If they're uniformly equivalent, that's fine. So, so uh. okay. So. Just we can call them super and So what is this saying, right? So I have a pair x, uh, uh, a pair of points. One is x, the other one is y, and I want to start to integrate these points and see what's happening. So I apply x here. So let's say that's my function f here and y. Maybe so here is f of x, and maybe here is f of y. Want the limb soup to be greater than zero? So there's some sequence here that you know they're not getting too close. So maybe I'll get here uh, f square of x, and then I'll get f square of y, and maybe here I get f cube of x and f cube of y. And let me give you the next thing. Why I'm doing this, guys, getting closer and closer, and the other ones I'm kind of keeping a distance, right? So what you want to find here is that when you iterate these points, these two points, you find a sequence of the iterates. One, they're getting really close to each other. Like this one, the distance is getting smaller and smaller, right? They're here. So the limit, uh, the limit inf is zero. But on the other hand, you find a subsequence. Let's like say here, the interrates, uh, the odd ones, or the odd ones or the even ones. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, where this distance, you know, is greater than a certain number. So this point, you start with two points, and you cannot tell that the orbits either get close or either get apart. They do both things. Kind of chaotic. Oh, you started from metric space. You have started with axiomatic metric space. Yeah. Uh, yes, for, for this, we want a metric space. I should have said that. Thanks. So we say that the, the system is chaotic, not if it just has one pair that's scrambled, but if you can find a set, an uncountable subset where every single point on that account, two pairs, every two pairs of points that you pick on that subset is scrambled, okay? So that's when the system is Lee or K, uh, chaotic, which is the first definition of chaos that showed up. So you have your dynamical system X, and you have to find a subset here that's uncountable, and you pick two, any, po any two points here, this and this. And they have to, the behavior has to be something like this. Okay? So, um, this is not, yeah. The, the, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of an outsider to the field. <laughs> Just <laughs> so I'm not really. Uh, so I. That's a good question. I don't know. So so let's get here the full shift on two generators, which is well. Let's just look at the graph with one vertex, and two edges, right? So this is edge zero, and the other one is edge one, edge zero and edge one. So anything can be followed by anything. Can you guys give me a sc a scramble pair? Just now, so here is the ele the elements here on this set, just sequences of zeros and ones. Can you guys give me two sequences with that metric that we defined it just, just here? They are scrambled. Any suggestions? Exercise, right? Find the. You want some iterates of it to be getting closer, right? Uh, I just I'll give the metric, right? So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You you can see here, right? These two points they're getting closer if they agree on larger and larger subblocks, right? Look at the distance of these two. It was one over two thirds. But if they agreed more, then it would be like one over two over four. So for them to be close, the sequence have to agree on larger and larger blocks. So you want some subsequence for this to happen, right? And then you also want them to be different uh, someplace. So as Luis was saying, we could get maybe 0, 0, let's say uh, 1, 0. Then I can do 0, 0, and do again. And then let's do here a 0 and a 1. And so I had one block of zeros here where they agreed, and they are different. Two blocks of 0, and they are different. Now let's get three blocks of zeros and let's say now that they are different, right? So if I take this to be X and this to be Y, hmm, um, well, right, when I, when I apply the distance between X and Y is one over two, one over two to the power two. Distance of x and y is one. Well, the first entry where they do not agree is the second. Then it's one to the two, to the two. Once I apply f of x, right, the distance will be just one half. And then when I apply again, I will erase the first two parts here. So they agree more and so on. So we have a subsequence here of the iterates where the distance is getting very small and the other one is always getting a half. Okay, so we found a scramble pair. Nice. Uh, can we find an uncountable set now? Right? What, what could we do? Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, sequence of zeros and ones. Yeah. If you want, you can add. You can add an extra right entry here for each time here, and just put anything, any symbol here, in the sequences. Right? Sequence of zeros and ones are uncountable. So I can just kind of get space on this sequence here in this set, and I'll find an uncountable scrambled set. So this is classic, right? All oh, this is classic, and this is the but this is the full shift too, right? So it's easy here. Everything is allowed. So if you want to see like what shifts have uh, chaos, not all of them have that. So we're talking about shift space. So here is a is a graph, right? We know that infinite paths is the space you're looking at. Um, Okay, um, well, let's say, uh, so so far in the conference, we have been seeing a lot of finite graphs. Well, I've been studying lately a lot of uh, infinite graphs, right? So we know here that the shift space is all infinite sequences. What happens if we decide to have a graph that has infinite uh, edges, for example? How can we define it? Uh, and this has appeared, right? Even with some applications, Supposedly in real life, which I well, that's that's what they say in the paper. Uh, but so, how can we define this? Well, one idea, right, is just to look at the infinite paths with the product topology and define the same metric. The problem here is that the space that you get is not even locally compact. So it's a space that 
you know, it's not so so nice. And it's also, I mean, why are you doing it, right? So, uh, so we when we studied, we wanted something that's motivated. Why we wanted this space to be the space associated with an uh, infinite graph. So, so Tomford, Ott, and Willis they proposed uh, an approach that's connected with graph sister algebras. And X and Laka in the paper in the 90s, they proposed that uh, the shift space associated to infinite matrix should be the spectrum of certain commutative algebra. And they're doing this because this usual shift space that I've just told you, it can be seen at the spectrum of this subalgebra uh, inside the famous Kunz-Krieger algebra. If you recover that, so well, maybe we should do the same for, for, um, for the infinite case. But then, you know, in generality, this space can be uh, hard to deal with. For labeled graphs, that's what Gilles was maybe telling you. When you look at the, uh, the G naught, the unit space of the groupoid associated to the labeled graph, that's that's what you know this thing is. So, but for us here, we just want a definition that will include both, you know, uh, the shift space associated to infinite matrices and the one associated with graphs. So for that, the, the best thing to use is ultra graphs, which being uh, defined by Mark Tomford, okay? But before we go to ultra graphs, I just look here at an infinite graph. Of course, I can draw infinite edges. So I just said that from C here to itself, there's an infinite number of edges here. That's what the infinity stands there. And um, the space here now that we have for this graph is again all the infinite paths. So one followed by two, so on. But also I get finite paths. Which ones? Well, I get the ones that end in one vertex that there's an infinite number of edges coming out. Okay? So I'll have in my space, I'll have uh, one, two, uh, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. But I also have the, just the path one, two, because it ends in C. Ooh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, now, the topology here is, again, is very similar to the one we had. So the product topology, well, not really. But for infinite sequences, you have cylinder sets, for those who know. that. So we can specify, I want to get an open set around this, this infinite sequence. We just specify a certain block here. And we look at all elements of the space that start with this block. If it's a finite sequence, then look, I has, it's I started at A, I followed by two, and I got to C, and I have infinite many possibilities. So I have to stop there a bit, and you know it's hard to do with infinity possibilities. So we pick some edges here that we don't like, and then we can follow this C here by anything that's not in that set of words that I don't like. Okay, so that would be the topology there, uh, but I don't want to say much about. But that's the topology. Now, if you go to ultra graphs, right? So that's infinite graphs. We also have notion for uh, for ultra graphs. So that's telling you. So this this is an example of an ultra graph. And just so you have an idea, let's say we have here uh, in our city, we don't anymore. They took out. But if you go to Europe, there's a lot. Some of these electrical scooters points where you can pick them up and go from one place to the other. Well, this. And if you return them to the right place, it's cheaper. You even get credits. It's almost free. So um, let's say from this point here, I can go with the scooter one to that point. And from this point here, I can go there with scooter two. So they have, like I think, about eight companies in Portugal. Let's just keep two here. Um, and let's say from this point to here, too bad. There is no way to go by scooter. I have to, let's say, walk. Or something. So that's a graph, right? It's not much fun. My graph here is like I have two paths, right? I have S1, I can follow by W, and well, paths. So I have S1, 2, uh, and I have S2, right? And I have S1. Okay. So this is here. I'm specify. I took scooter of company one, and then I walked, or I just took scooter two to go from I don't know U, V, and W. In the ultra graph, I can label the edges that come out of the same vertex. So let's say I don't care which company I took. I just want to know if I took a scooter or not. So um, in that case, I'll say now, I'll, I'll build an ultra graph here, say that from you, there's one edge only 
which represents that I, I just took a scooter, right, to go from one point R. So this edge comes here, and it kind of divides in two, like it becomes a head. So uh, V and uh, W. So this is just edge S. And, and from V here to W, I had a, I had walk here, right? So here now I just have, that's what's happening there, right? So there's two edges that put the same label. So it's the ultra graphics example of a label space, but where you can only label edges that start the same vertex. And if you look at this now, if I had this, well, this is horrible, but the range of the scooters, where can I reach using a scooter? I can reach vertex W and vertex V. So I'll say that the range of S, the range of S is uh, VW. V, uh, VW, sorry, I have too many Ws here. That's so bad. UV, uh, I would just put a W prime. Sorry about that. There's too many Ws here, so VW prime. Okay, so that means what? With a scooter, I can reach these two points in the city. Okay, so that's the idea of an ultra graph. And so what happens is that we have these generalized vertices, right? Now, it's a ultra graph is a graph, but the range of an edge can be a subset of vertices. So we call them these uh, generalized vertices, and uh, we, we have to deal with them, right? So we want to be able to do intersection with them, finite unions, and also want this set here of generalized vertex to contain all vertices, okay? And then you can define the algebra. Well, I have here a definition for the sister algebra. Sorry, this is, I didn't have real time to do it. Definition for algebra is the same. It's just, you know, remember for a layer of path algebra, you have a projection for each vertex. Here you have a projection for each uh, generalized vertex. And then they have to behave well with these Boolean algebra uh, operations. And you can see here four is just like the conscrigger relation they're used, right? The projection of vertex is just the sum of the final projections of the edges leaving that vertex. So let's see another example here. Let's say we look at the renew shift. So if I have a matrix A, I can build a neutral graph right, from it. And you say, well, I can just also look at the incident graph, right? So incident graph, I'll look at the first row here. So first, it's an infinite matrix. So I have an infinite number of vertices. And then I look at the first vertex and look where the ones in the matrix. Well, that's all ones. So there's one edge coming out of it, going to each vertex. On the second row, well, okay, I'll go to the second vertex. There's one only in the first entry. So there is an edge coming from two to one, and so on. Now, I could just study this graph, you tell me. I say yes. But when we look at the algebras associated to it, if you just build a graph, this, you know, the algebra associated to this matrix in the literature is not the same as the graph, necessarily the same, the graph, the same as the graph algebra. But if you look at this guy in the bottom as a neutral graph, then it is. The algebra associated to the matrix is the same as the algebra of this ultra graph. Where was the difference here? So this edge is from one here, there's all these, you know, little edges coming out of it. We see it as just one edge. So from one, I can go anywhere. With just one edge and th then i have to follow back and renew myself right if i want to go from one i go to five then i have to come back take some energy again and, and go on so there's a topological space right i mean we want to shift uh, well 10 minutes so uh, if you do it in general for for uh i already told you for graphs right it's just the infinite sequences and the finite sequence that end in an infinite meter for an ultra graph, I have to, it's a little bit more general, so we have to say a generalized vertex, an infinite meter, if it meets an infinite number of edges, and it's minimal if it contains no proper generalized vertex that's also an infinite meter, okay? Uh, and then we can say, so for example, for this, uh, if you look at BC here, BC is an infinite meter, right? because there is a infinite number of edges coming out of C. But it's not minimal, because C is also a vertex that emits an infinite number of edges. So in my space, in ultra graph shift space, I have all paths that we can follow here, and I have finite ones that end in a minimal infinite meter. 
So, right, so for example, I would have uh, two, and then we have a comma, C. So this would be, uh, sorry. Oh. So this would be a path in my shift space now. Right? It comes with this infinite meter here, minimal one. So that's the space. And so I told you the topology already, but now we wonder what's the metric. So remember, you can just think of graphs. You can forget ultra graph for now. You just have all these infinite sequences and the finite ones that end in a, in a vertex that is an infinite number of edges coming out of it. If you know the same metric is not, doesn't give you the topology you want. So we want the correct metric for here, here is the following. We have to list all the elements, all the blocks that appear in my, in my graph, okay? And then I have to look uh, at the, so I listed, I enumerated all the, the blocks that appear. And then I have to, sorry. When I wanna compare the, the distance between two points, two sequences, I look at the first of these blocks that's the initial segment of one and not the other. And okay, so I found that PI, and then I look where it is, is it listed? And the distance is gonna be one over two I. So it's not, it's not an easy metric. Uh, let me see. Uh, but you know, after a while you get used to it. If the shift is finite, these two metrics are uniformly equivalent. But if the shift is not finite, they are not. So then of course, right in this space, we have the shift map. We just erase the first entry as we said before. Let's just get back here. So how we would compute some distances here. So there's our renew shift. And I want to, well, I'll draw it here because I don't have the edges there. So I have one edge. Uh, I'm just here. Uh, edge E, with, with, such that the range is everything. Right, the range of this edge is everything. And then I have, every time I go forward, I have to come back. So that's, that's the ultra graph that's there. Uh, so how we do this metric? So we have to list all, all the paths here. You should list the vertices too, so I'll, I'll omit that for now. So of course, if I start uh, listing here E, F1, F2, I'm not gonna be able to finish, right? I'm never gonna get to the paths of length two. So let's, let's say we do, how we're gonna do this, we start with E, uh, then we can, do F1, this is getting weird now, oh, something happened. And now let's uh, list all paths of length two that with E and F1. So I can do E, E, and I can do E, F1, and I can do F1, E, F1, E, okay? Now I can list, I can list here F2. In my enum this is enumerating, right? All the blocks up here. Once I have F2, now let's list all the paths of length less or equal than three with E, F1, and F2. Okay, I'm not gonna do it, but I can do E, E, E. I can do E, F2, F1, and so on, right? So here is this enumeration P here that I was talking about. And if I want now, let's say, uh, find the distance between two points, let's say the distance between e infinity Infinity and I don't know, can pick anyone. Uh, what did I try here? EF1 infinity. Uh, EF1 infinity, right? So let's try to compute this distance. So I have here it's one edge that's E, 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 and so on. And EF1, E, E, and so on. So how am I going to compute this distance? Okay, so Look, the first block that's beginning of one and not the other is what? E is the same block. So I have EE -E or EF1. So EE -E is uh, here on the third entry, right? It's three. So it be, appears before EF1. So EE -E is a beginning of this X, but it's not of Y. So the distance of X and Y is one over two to the three, okay? Um, so that's how you compute this distance. You have to run there. This is a nice enumeration that we just find out recently with joint work with uh, Felipe and Danilo. Uh, we were, you know, we just, this, this is motivated by graphs and they just do any enumeration. And it helps a lot if you enumerate like, you know, in this way. 
So, well, can we get a scramble pair here now? Oops. Five minutes, that's perfect. Um, maybe this pair, uh, I don't know if it's scramble, but no, this one doesn't look to be. So how do we had before, right? We had something that was, let's say if we had E, 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 I can follow. And if I had E, F1, so I go E and I go back F1, I can go E, F1, E, F1, and so on. Uh, but that's not gonna work, right? So let's try to do something. Let's do something like we did last time. This is nice here, there's some freedom in this shift, so I can do E and then F1, and I can do E, 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 F1, and so on. Uh, right, so remember, I had to find a subsequence of the power zero, the shift map, uh, a subsequence that the distance of the interest will go to zero and one that the distance doesn't go to zero. So the distance here, let's see, between X and Y is the first block that is at the beginning of one but not the other, which is seen that is EE, so it's one of two thirds here, right? But once I erase this, the distance becomes even bigger, right? The first one that they disagree is E, so it's one over two. Now, if I erase this entry here, and I just look at it from here on, well, I have E, 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 E. So the first block here now between these two infinite paths uh, where they disagree is either E, E, E or E, E, F1. And, oh, it's there. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's one over two. One, two to the seven, right? Then I can go again, right, and shift a bit. I get EF1 here. So this is again just one half. And then I have now, if this block goes longer and longer as it should, you know, you, you'll find the first uh, block that's the beginning of one or the other is going to be farther and farther down your enumeration. So the distance is getting smaller. Now, to get like a uncountable set is not just. So easy, right? Because you cannot just put anything, right? You have to you have to watch for the restrictions given by the graph. So what we have proved with uh, Bruno Bujoni is that uh, these ultra graph shift spaces they have chaos if and only if you can find a vertex which is the basis of two different cycles, right? So if it's like it goes here, goes there, which is very similar to so there's one cycle here, say, and another cycle here. So if in your graph you have this kind of behavior, then you have your chaos. We actually even prove more. We prove that the existence of one scramble pair implies the existence of uncountable set. And we show that this uncountable set can be picking to be perfect and compact, which is a result that uh, is valid for the finite case. But if you just use the product topology, uh, Reigns and Reigns and uh, they have the result and you cannot do it, right? So if you just look at the shift space, let's say, with uh, the product topology, you cannot get the exact same result as you have in the finite case. While if this shift space is here motivated by sister algebra and, and algebras, we exactly get the exact same result as the finite case. So that's what I had about chaos. Just before I finish, right? So this is that's the main result. It's not even here. It's just, you know, I just want to mention a few more connections between dynamics and these algebras you've been seeing for this last week. So one is like uh usually talked about this, right? About the partial actions. And if you had a graph, you could look at the free group of the edges, and you could look at a partial action where you had the subsets. Right, when you had all the paths, for example, that start with an uh, edge, and if it is an A, I uh, don't have, a, let's say, if this is an A and this is a B, I can, and then there's a path going there, I can look at a subset of all the edges that start with A, and I have a map to all the, sub, all the edges that start with a B. I just erase the A and, and put the B in front. So he did all that and showed that the, the Lea Vita path algebra is isomorphic to the skewing of this of this action. Uh, it's also the groupoid, and also this happens for sister algebras. And the result is that the sister, the Lea Vita path algebra is simple 
has no ideals if and only if this action, that, well, it's what Gilles defined, right? Is topologically free. So the set of fixed points has empty interior and it's minimal. So the orbits are dense. Okay. So this is like really you're seeing the algebraic, the algebraic structure is giving you the, the dynamical uh, you know, structure and vice versa. And this is also characterized uh, in a combinatorial manner. Oh, now that I've seen this, maybe just for the experts here, I should mention that with recent work of none, we showed that any uh, ultra graph Levit path algebra that's unital and that has an infinite number of hereditary and saturated subsets cannot be seen as a Levit path algebra. So this is just something, that, you know, so it's just to characterize what kind of new ultra graph algebras you get when you're doing ultra graphs. Forgot to say that before, sorry. So we can also study orbit equivalence. So this orbit equivalence is a notion between these spaces that I just described to you guys. So when these orbits under the shift, there's a notion of equivalence. One can be mapped to the other, preserve things. So this has been shown to be this equivalence now, which is just a really dynamical property in terms of orbits. It translates into an isomorphism between the algebras that preserves a certain subalgebra. Okay, both in sister algebras and Leavitt path algebras. Uh, and so finally, you know, there's many other topics to, to study, like the path groupoid, continuous orbit equivalence, full groups, which is also not invariant for these algebras. Um, if you like ultra graphs, you can try to find you know, analog results of uh, Leavitt path algebras to ultra graphs. With you have should be careful because they are Morit equivalent. So you know. If you look at things that preserve the Marit equivalence, then you're not going to get much new. Uh, and symbolic dynamics. I really like this last one because it's huge, right? Anything you like in symbolic dynamics. And okay, so look, and especially shifts of finite type. Because ultra graph shifts, they generalize shifts of finite type, but they're a little bit more than that. So there's, you know, not everything holds, but you can get your favorite result in symbolic dynamics. And uh, that holds, and you might wonder, well, does it hold for a neutral graph shift space? And so you're checking if these shifts that come from sister algebra theory, they're behaving well. So this is, you know, a lot of things that can be done here. So that's all I had. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Any questions? So, so you show that actually just having one scrambled pair is enough to have incredibly many. Yes. Okay. And, and we also show that there's many other notions of uh, chaos, and they are all equivalent in this case. Okay. Like distributional for, for... chaos of type one or uh, Devonet chaos. So there's other notions. Okay. okay. So, sorry, maybe Luis bring the mic. So you want it uh, said to be uncountable, yes. these X. Does it have to do with somewhere something is non-compact? I mean, like the chaos, you just don't put it into a compact right. set. It should no, you would like everywhere. to find a compact. If you find a compact, it's nice. But... Um... Yeah, maybe if it's uh, countable, it'd be too easy. I don't know. Yeah, I, I really don't have a good answer for that. Mm -hmm. Thank so. you. All right. If there are no further questions, let's thank thank Daniel again. Okay. And here tomorrow. <laughs>